time travelers, alien, espers, the RSS. I just know it. I just know it. And this. Yes, playing horror Reach to me at games will prove it. <laughs> Aww. But I was just trying to prove you sisters up by playing the horror Reese Yuzumiya games. <laughs> well, my adorable mascot, Timmy the Taco. Horror Reese Yuzumiya is a Japanese night novel series by these talented folks that follows Kian being forced to the SOS for great buzz by horror Reese Yuzumiya. Uh. Then you better show up, mister, because if you don't. <laughs> Well, passionate girl, who uses this club to investigate mysterious people, such as... Okay, we get it. But, and uh, now I'm kinda not interested in this series. Did I mention that the... Susie Mia is looking for or secretly her club mates, watching Susie Mia's every move because she's essentially a god with reality walking powers, and she doesn't even know either one of those facts. Okay, S still okay. <laughs> The Night Lover series was a success, causing for anime, movies, manga, and yes, video games, with there being nine official ones and a couple of mysterious fan games that's heavily inspired by another iconic anime series. But we'll get into that later. Can we play every Harry Mee's Susumi game to prove the existence of Let's freaking do this. This is the promise of Hari Suzumiya, a Japanese exclusive visual novel PSP game by Ben and Namco. Pretty much all the Hari Suzumiya games are Japanese exclusive. However, there are countless people out there who have taken the time to translate and ROM hack most of the game, with them being kind enough to sit down with me to interview them. You'll see the result of that later on. For now though, thanks to the translation of Esper Knight for this game, I know why! This game starts with the player character, Kia, meaning the other SOS Parade members to patrol the city and search for. Only one problem though, most of the members cancel at the last minute, leaving us with Suzumiya, all alone. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm not supposed to tell you. We I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, this leads to harm me demanding answers, sitting way too close to me, leading us to a motherfucking gameplay. This is the SOS system, which involves asking questions and talking to people, with the name making a lot of sense considering talking to Harvey makes me want to SOS myself. There are a total of six topics to choose from, ranging from mundane things like gossiping about people, talking about what's happening, and personal hobbies like cosplaying. <laughs> Not now, Timmy! The purpose of this gameplay mechanic is to, well, progress with the story. And there are four different clear conditions. The successful clear, which involves you essentially sucking up to whatever character you talk to. The nervous clear, which you get too shy and run away from the conversation. Normal clear, in which you run out of topics to say. And bored clear, me talking to Harvey. You know what? Screw it! I'll tell you everything! All of our little friends in the SOS group that didn't show up, yep, there's the people that you're looking for. Asahina, yep, she's a time traveler. Nagato is a motherfucking alien android and Koizumi is a motherfucking esper. There! Did that go through his thick door with your cutesy little ribbon? Great! Now leave me the frick alone! That aside, there's a generally really fun and charming visual novel, and this game is a really neat, game-exclusive side story that takes place after the melancholy of Harumu Suzumiya. The story involves us being stuck in a motherfucking time loop during the school festival, with us having to figure out the case within by interacting and helping our fellow friends' problems. Will we be able to help our friends and find the cause? And wait, there's a younger version of Haruhi running around? There's two of them! Now for you to find out. Alright, that was awesome. Now it's time for my peanut butter honey banana sandwich. Ow! What the heck? Timmy, I think there's someone that's freezing time that might be messing with me. I must be on the right track then. Well then, let's play. The Perplexity of Haru Suzumiya, which is a Japanese exclusive PS2 game by Van Presso. Unfortunately, this game doesn't have an English translation yet, but it's still interesting because depending on how you play this game, it can be any genre you want. You see, you play as Kian again, going through the typical visual novel jargon you expect, with the main premise being to create the ultimate video game, mainly because Suzumiya is forcing you to do so yet again. The main gameplay mechanic is this board right here, where you can pick and choose which ideas you want for your game. Want to make it a robot? game? Choose that. A dating sim? No. A princess maker dress up competition game? <laughs> J 
two. Time freezer! This game has such a funny mechanic, and replaying the game over and over again to see what goofy and unique ending you get is such a treat. But we need to hurry up and play the next game, because I swear some mysterious time freezer keeps messing things up. <laughs> it's time for a dance break. Wait, what? <laughs> This is the assignment of Hari Suzumiya, another Japanese exclusive game. No, screw this information jargon. It's a motherfucking just dance. Motherfucking just dance. And do you want to know something interesting? This will change the way that you think. This is a life changing game. It's up. Okay, I love just dance. There, I said it. I also love the ending to the mechanic of Haru Suzumiya and its iconic dance that every 2000s kid know. Even in early 2010 kids, such as Moi, was obsessed with this ending. But I wasn't obsessed with it to the point where I wanted to do it with a motherfucking. We were more attached on my wrist. All to can decide though, I honestly have a blast for this game. You pretty much are going through a short visual novel segment, then dancing to what moves it shows on the screen, nothing special there. But during some moments of the sun, if you mess up, you can't do anything but sit there, watching Nadago decide to put on her glasses and stare into the void. <laughs> I'm defeated. Dancing is hard work. I'm sure I'm not missing anything though. Okay. There's motherfucking baseball? Okay, dancing I can get behind, but baseball? Motherfucking baseball? Why? Oh, but Eric, they played baseball in the anime. Wow, good for them. That still doesn't justify this monstrosity. And it's not just that, but there's fortune telling, rock, paper, scissors, and a whole heap of miscellaneous stuff that can't even play because it requires you to beat the game. But newsflash, I suck at dancing games. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. <laughs> Wait, how did you? <gasps> I NEED MOTHERFUCKING GLASSES! <laughs> oh well, anyway, I still haven't found this mysterious time stopper, so let's play! The parallel of Haru Shizumiya by Sega on Nintendo Wii uh, It's not a dancing game this time Oh, phew But an interactive visual novel game in which the characters are 3D this time Wait, 3D? No, no, no. So a girl that's been haunting you has gotten stronger? You don't understand. She can do this. I hate this job. But you won't hate this game, as this game is legit really well made. It is really well animated well throughout, and it has just the right amount of interactive segments and mini games that utilize the Wii remote, and a story that involves just on a time loop on a cruise ship, Susan Mia getting married, and... Duplicates of her cast? Oh, hey. Hey. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm you. Yes. Cat girl should the seat. Cat girl should What he said. What he said. It's critical that this game has not gotten translated yet. However, the next game on our list has not only been translated, but fully been reworked by a team of talented people, making this one of the most impressive anime fan translations to date. And I got the pleasure to interview them. Before that though, let's talk about the series of Haru Sujimiya on a Nintendo DS. The game starts with the SOS meeting just like the first game, but this time, everyone showed up. Yay! During this meeting, we get a phone call from one of our friends who has heard of the mysterious rumor of some unnatural phenomena. Oh boy, here we go again with the unnatural Natural phenomena. Ah. Hmm? Tell me more. Yeah, this led to us staying at the school to investigate, questioning our school neighbors, the computer club in the process. I'm sure interviewing our lovely computer club buddies will ensure us that this quote unquote unnatural phenomena is just nonsense. Oh no. So, let me get it straight. There's this mysterious classroom that comes out of nowhere and eats people? <laughs> what a load of nonsense. <laughs> the 
this doesn't even make any sense. Gameplay time. It's complex, but bear with me. So throughout this game, you're presented with choices. Yeah, typical bitch of an apple player. However, this game takes it to a whole nother level. This is the horror you need her. And depending on your choices throughout the game, she either is distracted from solving this quote unquote paranormal activity or dead set focused on it. Like I mentioned earlier, Sudamiya is a reality warping god and she doesn't even know it. If she's convinced something is real, it will actually happen in the real world. The goal is to get this meter as far away as focused as possible. Otherwise, during the puzzle phase portion of the game, the speed in which she 100% finds these abnormal spaces she accidentally created increases. Which, if that happens, see this world? Boom! So about those puzzle portions. This is the main part of the gameplay. The goal is to find abnormalities within the mysterious Manning classroom Sudamiya is accidentally creating and removing them before time runs out, dealing with accidental encounters and... Well, this along the way. Wait, how do you fight it? With a motherfucking broom! We're screwed. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Whoa, really? I'll give it a shot. So when am I gonna get my broom room powers, Timmy? <laughs> Anyway, during these accidental encounters, you have to select a topic to distract her. With there being four types of topics. The types are subtopics, main topics, hard read topics, and character topics you get via how you interacted with the story. Which, when used right, can either successfully invade an accident point and give us a lot more time to find these abnormalities. But if done wrong though... So how's the weather going? This is a complex, yet such a fun and unique gameplay structure that I have not seen before. And you could tell there was a lot of thought put into it. I especially love the DS specific elements they put into it. Like throwing the DS stylus as fast as possible to get rid of the abnormality, and sliding icons to choose what people does what in the game. For example, we need to trick the computer club members into thinking their legit paranormal experiences were just a fragment of their imagination. Should we rely on just not gonna go for help? Go with a coup too? Or... Did you really need to distract the girls? Yeah, I told you, the gameplay is long and complex to explain. I'll show you a stupid joke. My fist. What happened to you? Shut up and tell me why you started translating this game in the first place. This is the project leader of the Hari Translation Club, Junko. And this project all started when this person joined another group, the Stardust Fandubs group, who takes the time to translate obscure, forgotten, and older anime, with one of the translations they had in flight being Wangani, My Melody. Throughout this, Junko found out, hey, there's a Wangani, My Melody DS game, let's translate that too. Which kickstarted Junko's love for learning how to ROM hack games. And after some translation projects, Junko came across this one post from Sarah Bear asking to help translate this game. So you got together, recruited some more people, and formed the Hurry Translation Club to translate this game. And boom, the rest is history. There were some struggles. Really? Is this translating text right? Well, not exactly. When talking to Junko about the struggles the team had to endure, it really just opened my eyes on how much work these projects take. But do you know what? Despite all the struggles, the team worked hard and did it. The Haruri Translation Club put together the strains and what they love doing to create one of the most impressive fan translations I have ever seen. And if you think that's the end of the story, well, that's only the first chapter. The Haruri Translation Club didn't just plan on translating this game, but also every single Haruri Suzumiya game, with the parallel of Haruri Suzumiya being Ness. Heck, they already created the tooling for it and have a script. Only one problem, they need help. They don't have enough translators for this game. So, if you are someone who is interested in making a difference in the anime gaming world and can translate Japanese to English and vice versa, I highly encourage you to join the Haruri Translation Club by clicking on their website in the description below and joining their Discord. Heck, if the Haruri Translation Club does get the people they need and successfully complete the translation of the parallel of Harumi Sujimiya, I will buy that cursed bunny costume Timmy won't shut up about, wear it, and force myself on a green screen and say and perform every single comment below this one you're seeing right now. <laughs> That's the spirit, Timmy. You know, I'm gonna be real for a sec. Not exactly the brightest guy. Josh, 
You know, I really have no talents besides making jokes and playing the game. Heck, I even can't find out who this time stopper is right now. But seeing these people using their hobbies they worked hard at, whether it be learning more than one language, design something, or ROM hacking to create a project they care about is really inspirational. This is why I'm personally going to set aside an hour three times a week to teach myself Japanese. It's something I'm honestly looking forward to, and for the people that did take the time to translate this game. Yes, I know you're watching because I kidnapped you guys. Just know that you as well as many other fan translators were a huge inspiration for me. And as cheesy as I may be with this with the inspiration of music and all, I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Just know that you inspired at least one person out there. <laughs> That's right, I'm not done proving the insistence of... Let's be go over the last three official games. The reminiscences of Harvey Suzumiya is a PS3 and PSP visual novel game by Bandai Namco that is a really well told story about the aftermath of the disappearance of Harvey Suzumiya film. And while there's no translated version out there, this YouTuber, Let's Play Harvey, translated via a YouTube subtitles. My boss here said you'll find it in the. What did you say? YouTube description. Yeah, that. Cut. <sighs> Can I go on break now? Five minutes. Thanks, boss. There also is, of course, a gambling machine based on the series as well. A mobile game that just so happens to be the only game that actually has an official English translation. And... A motherfucking Majan game! This is the Majan of Harari San Shuzumiya by Kadokiwa Games on the PSP. And man, this game is definitely the odd one out what is otherwise a franchise with a bunch of really solid games. The art style looks pretty rough. I mean, dude, just staring at me. Watching my every move like they're gonna kidnap me. Imagine that. Who said you could talk? And the Majan portion is honestly not that much better. I really wish they did something creative and unique to the format, like how the DS game did to the visual novel genre with the Harari meter. <laughs> I swear, Timmy, if you say guy in a bunny suit, I will haunt you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember when I said that there's a fan game based off another iconic anime series? Well, this is the turnabout Harari Suzumiya by the company Coop Type, which is based on the Phoenix Wright series. A series that has you playing the lawyer Phoenix Wright, someone who investigates clues and tries to prove people innocent with the uh, court. And this game is no different. You see, Kiana is falsely accusing of staring a maid outfit and is put on trial. <laughs> you mean to tell me I could have been wearing a maid outfit all along? <laughs> but what's surprising is that this game is legitimately a really great game. From the dialogue, the art, everything just works. It honestly feels more like a licensed game than... Uh... So it's not surprising that there are two sequels, each one better than the last one. And that's not the only fan game out there based on the series, but that's another adventure for another day. I'm gonna eat the sandwich now. Haha! <laughs> 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 Timmy, you're the time freezer! <laughs> you know there's a camera right there, right? I checked the footage. <laughs> well, as long as you do one thing. <laughs> That's what Timmy gets. <laughs> oh, like the skateboards in Eureka 7. <laughs> Stay tuned to the next episode where we take a look at the Eureka 7 games. Sign or motherfucker.